uh, 24th of April. It's Watch Me Work. I'm Susan Lori Parks. Um, we've been doing Watch Me Work for 11 years, and mostly in the lobby of the public theater, uh, but also in venues all over the country, all over the world, where basically we spend time working together and then talking about our creative process, or basically your work and your creative process. Um, just in case any, nobody knows, I'm a writer of many, many different kinds of things, plays, movies, novels, um, songs with my band, essays, all that kind of stuff. So I do a lot of different kinds of writing. And um, 11 years ago, I thought it might be fun to talk with complete strangers about their writing. So that's how pretty much how Watch Me Work was born. I am the master writer chair at the public theater, which means that the public theater supports me in my endeavors and including this one. Um, so big thank you to the Public Theater for supporting Watch Me Work for 11 years. Recently, past few years, Howl Round has come on to allow us to live stream. And, uh, and big up for Howl Round joining us in this so we can bring it all to you all these days in a row. We've been doing it four weeks in a row, five days a week. Um, so thank you to those folks there. So um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna work for 20 minutes and then we're going to talk about your work and your creative process for the uh, for about 40, 40 minutes. And uh, yeah, if you wanna get in touch and have a question about your work and your creative process, Audrey can tell you how to get in touch. Thanks, SLP. Um, so uh, what's gonna happen is if you have a question and you're in the Zoom, what you can do is click on the raise your hand button. It should be in a participant tab, likely at the bottom of your screen if you're on a laptop or the top if you're on an iPad. And if you're watching the stream on HowlRound.tv, you can get in touch with us over our social media. You can tweet at us at the public or go on our Instagram, or you can tweet at us at, at WatchMeWorkSLP with the hashtag HowlRound, H-O-W-L-R-O-U-N-D. And that's it. All right. So um, here we go. We've got 20 minutes to work together. And here we go.
All right. All right. That was the 20 minutes of uh, <clears throat> work time. And now we're going to go with the around 40 minutes of dialogue talking. So does anybody have a question? I actually don't see any hands raised at the moment. Uh -huh. We can sit in silence. <laughs> Ah, we got a hand. <laughs> oh, now we have two hands. Sorry. Yeah. Meryl, you're up. All right, Meryl. Go for it. Turn up your volume a little bit. Oh, yeah. uh, almost. Can you speak a little louder? Yes, I can, definitely. Um, yeah, I just want to say thank you. Um, my question is, I've been playing around what time of day I can maximize my time while writing, set aside the time that's been working when I don't have much else to do. But I'm just thinking when things resume, our days are going to be filled again. Like, how do you, what do you suggest on like when there are days that you just, the words are not coming or your mind is not on the piece of work, the play that I'm wanting to work on. Do I jump on something else? Do I keep writing even though it's mediocre and revisit it later? That's a good question, Merle. Um, uh, first of all, just trying to pick, choose a time of day that you can sort of maximize, you know, your creative uh, output, if you will. You're thinking about that. Are you a morning person or a night owl or what? Um, why am I struggling? I'm more of a night person. Okay, okay. So maybe working at night might be best for you, you know, right? Okay, because that's kind of your time that you feel like, yeah, right? Mm -hmm. um, so that's the time of day that you could choose to work, um, regardless of your schedule. So you want to, you would want to sort of create a schedule that would accommodate that, right? Um, also, what do you do when it's just not like flowing out of your pen? like the scene in Dr. Zhivago where they walk into the house and it's zero degrees and he picks the ink up and he dips it in and it just writes, even though the ink would be frozen. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Inspiration is so hot. He's just going, right? Um, that's what we think it's like to be a writer. A real writer can go into a frozen house and take a frozen bottle of ink and dip your frozen pin in it and the words just flow. It's amazing. Uh, for most of us, that's not how it really works really um so the rest of us usually just pick away at the shit you know you know we put the time in and you're you become we become okay with it not being beautiful and perfect right all right you know first draft you know um it's a it's a it's a trick it's like Lysol, you know, you don't want to believe that shit. That's a bunch of lies. You know what I'm saying? You, I mean, but I'm just gonna say, don't, nobody drink Lysol to get for anything, <laughs> or inject it if you have the apparatus to inject it. Please don't do that. But um, you know, you know what I'm saying, Meryl. You just have to be okay with it being kind of bumpy some days. You know, um, it's a relationship you're having. So some days it flows beautifully. Some days it, it doesn't flow at all, you know? And you gotta just keep putting the time in. And it sounds like you're a night person, so pick a time at night. If it's just 20 minutes, that'll do it. That'll work. And just put the time in every day and it will accumulate. Awesome, thank you so much. You're welcome. Thanks so much, Meryl. Um, all right, up next we've got Crystal. Go for it, Crystal. Hi. Um, so I am still um, trying to work with this story and um, hear the voices and still struggling with it. Um, I'm trying hard not to give up <laughs> um, and not to just move on to another story, but I, I really am, um, I mean, I, I, I know you said last time not to look at the, um, the faces, but to listen for the voices. And um, they just seem so faint still, but I'm still writing more like dumb, like stupid plots and more like things for the bios and things for 
um, the things like that. And I'm, I'm even trying to write like scenes, not for this particular story, but just scenes to see if like, maybe if I just get dumb, ran random scenes out that like something else can come of it. So I just, I don't know why this is, it seems like it's so complicated and, and it shouldn't, it shouldn't be. Yeah, it should. And I'm just going back to something. So I said, don't look at the faces, just look at the voices, because you were getting hung up on what how they should look. look. Yeah. yeah. Right. So if you're getting up on how they should look and that's stopping you, then I said, don't worry about it. If you're right. not getting up hung up on how they should look, then that's fine. Right. Um, but um, yeah, I like what you said about it's complicated and difficult and it shouldn't be. Why not? <laughs> Maybe maybe writing is complicated and difficult sometimes. Yeah. You know what I mean? Maybe it's yeah. hard. I mean, look at it this way. If it were easy, everybody would do it. Yeah. You know? Um, it's like running a it's like it's like winning the New York marathon, you know? I mean, it's hard, right? Right. And we don't have any question about it being difficult. That's hard. You see those people running. Oh my uh -huh. God. That's hard, right? I mean, even if you don't win, but if you come in under, under, you know, whatever, uh, three hours or what, I mean, you're running. It's hard. We have no question that it's difficult. We see somebody play the guitar or, or ice skate, you know, or what? Anything, anything, anything that requires a certain amount of skill. And we go, whoa, you know, playing soccer, catching a football whatever baking a cool cake or some, something right we go wow ah, look at them that's that takes some skill writing we're like it should be easy why writing is a skill it's a craft it takes a lot of work um and so we get all wrapped up in our heads because we think it should be easy and then we're mad at ourselves when it's not easy and it's difficult you're on the right track it's hard Ow, painful sometimes. Mm -hmm. You know, so if you're having a difficult time, that's okay. You know, you're in you're in league with others. There are many others on this path, you know? Yeah. If you're having a difficult time, that's okay. It's it if it's easy, great. I mean, I don't want it, I don't wish it to be difficult for you, but I also want to tell you that if it is difficult, you don't need to like hate on yourself for it. You know, like, oh, look, I'm a loser. Not that you're saying this, but you know, ah, bad me. Should be easy. I should just be able to write this in five seconds. Right. Writing is a skill. People who are pros, I mean, you know, it's like ice skating. You know, those ice skaters, they make it look easy, don't they? Look at that. You never go, I, I could do that. I could. <laughs> right? I mean. <laughs> yeah, and yet we go we look at some writing oh yeah i could i could i could do that yeah because i got a story inside me there's a lot more to writing than just having a story inside you and admiring the works of others okay and you know that because you've done a lot of writing you know that right so keep going with your character bios keep going with your, your crazy plot stuff keep going with all that stuff that's the work you're doing the work okay okay and just keep going keep working okay 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 <laughs> i know you got a lot going on um and it's tricky but just just keep putting the time in you know and it will accumulate okay 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 yeah it's always great to see you crystal thank you thank, thank, you. thank you thank you thank you crystal um all right next we've got gerald you with us Yes. Hi. Hey. Hey. Thank you so much for doing this. Um, can I just say I love Bakaye so much. I don't. <laughs> it's like embedded on my soul, oh, especially when I think of Hester and her son. Anyway, and those scenes. Oh, anyway, uh, especially now, what we're anyway, what we're dealing with. Not that we're in that time, but it's making me think a lot of that play. One a question I have, thank you, is um, about transitions, because I'm working a play and I wrote, 
I wrote different scenes like you've talked about on index cards and then I brought them together and I'm finding that the, tra the, the transitions from one scene to the next are not smooth. And the other thing, can I ask a two part? I don't want to be greedy. Yeah. No, go ahead. Let's see if I can answer two part is, um, Sometimes I feel that just my vocabulary is just not, you know, how do you trust your vocabulary? I feel like I'm not, um, I don't have, always have the words, you know, when I'm writing. I do a lot of nonfiction writing. Uh -huh. so, and I feel like I'm just using the same words. And how do you develop that muscle of finding better? I work with a thesaurus. Okay, okay. You can, well, to develop, I mean, to get more words in your head, you can read more. You know what I mean? That's a good, a cool way to do it, you know? So you're reading at random and you're reading things that delight you and you're filling the well of your, your word hoard, mm -hmm. you know? So yeah. you've got lots of words at your fingertips. Um, yeah, uh, that's a good way to sort of just read more, read some classic plays, read some poetry that you like, read some, you know, just enjoy yourself and listen to music, listen to lyrics, you know, lots of great songwriters out there who write beautifully. Um, be great to hear what, the, what words they're using, um, you know, uh, but the transitions question, I mean, you want to make sure you want to feel like the, tr the, the end of the scene kind of tees up, introduces it helps to guide us to the next scene, you know, in some way. It can be story-wise, it can be emotionally, it can be kind of imagistically, kind of they're kind of sort of related, you know. They don't have to be lockstep like this necessarily, but you want to feel that you're helping the audience go from one to another um, if they don't feel smooth to you. Just want, you know, like what happened in this scene and how does that help what's happening in the next scene. Okay. You see what I mean? Yeah. Like she bakes a cake and then she lets it cool mm -hmm. and then she's going to put icing on it. And then she'll have a dinner party. You know, you know what I mean? I mean, track your story. See if your story is making, is making sense. You have a novella, right? Am I right? I'm oh, you have a good memory. Yeah. yeah well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah so so you and you've already written it and now you're yeah. so you've already got transition how were your transitions in your novel novella well i'm in the midst of the novella so i feel okay. yeah it's it's the uh play i feel like they're not strong enough so it's not gonna make the novella work if the transitions are mm -hmm. feels very mm -hmm. compartmentalized mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. well try just tr Again, this is yeah. the thing, write, and yeah. then when you go back, rewrite and look at the transitions. So don't stop to get the perfect transitions. Just write it since you already have a draft in one incarnation and then go back and rewrite and focus just on the transitions, you know? Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome, Gerald. Thanks, Gerald. Thanks. All right, up next we have Bo. Go for Hi. Bo. Hi. Just a sec. I think I'm not. I think I'm on mute. We oh, hear you. Oh, we hear you. Hi. Um, yeah, I'm wondering how you how do you balance that part in the process where all of a sudden the characters start taking a life of their own and, uh -huh. and the craft of still following your outline and your structure. I mean, still allowing for it to grow. But you mm -hmm. know, that point where all of a sudden they just want to go over here. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Uh -huh. Well, that? Yeah, I mean, follow follow them if it seems interesting yeah you know what i mean follow them if it seems interesting if it, and if it if it leads down like into a dead end then come back and 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 say okay guys okay people you know we're going down this way you know um it might be that they have a better idea than you do it might be that you are having a difficult time concentrating you don't know you know we don't know so um, ask them also, why are you going down that way? I had this plan for you. What, what are you doing? Over, why are you going over there? You know, I mean, mm -hmm. treat them like people that you're on a road trip with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I always find that part is quite magical. 
Uh huh. Uh huh. It's great. It's a great feeling, and you want to allow your characters to have a life, you know, have lives. Um, but at the same time, you um, you want to you if you have an idea about what you'd like to show then just keep your, don't totally let your idea go out the window without really thinking about, okay, well, where are we going here? Mm -hmm. Because, you know, we'd hate for you to be like in the bushes or whatever and go, ah, now what do I do? No, but it it is like you're having a conversation with them. Mm -hmm. Uh Uh-huh, uh-huh. Sounds like fun. Yeah, it's fun. Sounds like fun. Mm, Thanks. Thanks. Thanks so much, Bo. All right, next we've got Roxanne. Roxanne? Can you hear us? So, oh, hold on. Okay. There we go. There we go. Sorry. <laughs> no worries. Um, thank you so much for doing this. I have a question about um, getting stuck in the research phase. Mm-hmm. I feel like maybe I'm using it as a stalling tactic, but I'm like, okay, I have this idea and I'm doing my character development and then I'm like you know what? I'm gonna watch this show to get inspiration because it's like this or I'm gonna go and make a spreadsheet of the books I need to read to learn more about craft especially since I'm new to playwriting and I wanted to know just kind of how to wiggle my way out of using research and and finding other forms to be inspired to just actually start writing right 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 and you know starting writing and keeping going are, are skills you know it's it takes a huge amount of courage and you just have to realize that maybe you don't, I mean, how much research do you need? If it's something you know nothing about, you know, set a time limit. Okay, I'm gonna do a month of research. You know, whether it's, I'm gonna do a month of research because I wanna learn about more about playwriting, you know, or I'm gonna do a month of research because I wanna learn more about that particular uh, aspect of what I'm writing about, right? Um, but you keep it to, or two weeks of research. That might be even better. And you can really gorge on the research. Ah, I'm just going to take in everything I can. And then when two weeks is over, I close the books and dive in. And I write for, and I try to get a draft out before I go back and do more research. You can always do more research, you know? Um, But if you get bogged down in it, you'll never get your writing done, you know? Yeah. You know? So you can always go back, circle back and, oh, gee, I didn't know so much about that. You know, let me circle back and do a little bit more research, you know? Yeah. I mean, research is great, but too much of it, like anything. Yeah, totally. Yeah. It keeps you from doing your thing, right? Yeah. Thank you. That's, that's really helpful. Yeah. Just put some boundaries on it, you know? Thanks. You're welcome. Thanks, Roxanne. Um, All right. Next, we have got Michael. Michael. Yes. Hello. Hi. Hi. Hey, Michael. Hi, Susan Laurie. Thank you so much for doing this. Oh, um, thank you. So I'm a, uh, um, my, a lot of my professional experiences as a director and I, uh-huh. and I enjoy writing and, and I'm working on a new play from the other uh-huh. side of the table as it were. And I guess m- one of my questions has to do with structure and how much, how much is it helpful to know the story ahead of time structurally, someone else mentioned an outline and how much can I just just get on this road trip without a map or a GPS, as you're saying, with a road trip. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's so that's one thing. And the other the other thing, if if there's a way to answer both, um, mm-hmm. is like as a director, I'm really used to like being the audience until the audience is there in rehearsal and just thinking about the audience's experience. And I'm noticing with writing that like I'm I'm getting really product oriented or like will this work? Just like stuff that is very practical production-y, not even just like a flying chandelier or something, but just, is it any good? And then it get, and then like the critic is sitting right next to me. And uh, I just really admire the work you've done and how you just, it just seems to me like you just pursued your voice, you know, you just pursue it. And with a, with a singularity that I think there's a lot of bravery in that. And I'm, I'm, I'm encountering the, the, the critics. Yeah. They're always there. Mm-hmm. They're always there. Um, uh, yeah, it's tri- it's tricky when you when you've done a lot of work directing and and you're trying you know it from the other side, if you will, and you have to sort of yeah develop new skills, right? Yeah. Um, I say keep both eyes focused on the work. You know, it doesn't mean that we don't care about the audience, but really, um, if you think about it, like if if you're if I'm writing a play right now and I was thinking about the audience. 
What does that even mean? Who is the audience? Where are they? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, really think about it. And if we're lucky, the audience is a whole bunch of people that you've never met, you don't know, you don't know who the people are back there in the house on any given night. There are, you know, thousand strangers or 600 strangers or 50 strangers or whatever big your house is, you know? So I don't really think too tough about the audience in that sort of, will they like it or not? Cause I don't know who they are, right? Mm -hmm. My audience is, is me. Do I like it? Is it working? Is it funny? Did that make me laugh? Ha <laughs> ha, it made me laugh. Oh, I like that, you know? So I'm the, the primary audience um, when I'm writing uh, and it's super helpful, uh, which is maybe different, obviously it sounds like it's different for, for a director, but, but for me to get that first draft out, I have to just focus both eyes on the work. Who was that? Was it Virginia Woolf or was it Emily Dickinson or someone said about Emily Dickinson? I can't remember. I think someone said about Emily Dickinson. She had both eyes on the work you know, which is kind of cool. Um, and I can't remember your second question. because I, uh, I think it was just it was how much structure outlining. versus just road yeah. tripping and seeing what right. road you want to turn on to. How much, how much, I mean, I think you should do what you feel like and see how it feels. And then if you don't like it, try another way. You know, I would say, you know, outline a little bit, but if you don't like it, then don't. And just run off into the field and see how that feels you know run down the road and see how far you get and see what it, it feels like does that make sense and if it's like whoa then then you might want to do a little bit of outlining what are you going to say no i i was just saying it sound it, it's what i'm hearing is you say try some stuff and then and then check in and see how it feels yeah yeah like, see how I'm, it see how it feels see how it, it seems like that's a lot of the feedback is sort of like try it check in right well that's what it is about making art you know yeah try it give it a whirl because some people don't like hate outlining but they hate outlining and then they always get lost and ah i die i get to page four and then i'm ah you know uh, okay try outlining you know what i mean try a tool you know oh, i want to i want to i want to make a dog house and i have a nail and i'm hitting it with my head and it's hurting yeah try a hammer you know that's okay. Plenty of people can make a doghouse with just their forehead. I'm not one of them. Uh, you, you, there are tools, you know, so I'm just saying try a tool, you know, try one. They're out there. They're, no, no tools are evil. Um, they're all for our use, you know, and people have used them over, over hundreds and hundreds of years. I mean, even, even if you think about like, you know, I don't know, Homer, the Homer, you know, po epic poems, you know, they, they, they had outlines in a way because they were known stories. You know what I mean? That's an outline. You're, you're telling something that's known already. So there's an outline of sorts there. You know, it's not like this is kind of a new thing that people start doing in grad school. I mean, I wouldn't know. I didn't go to grad school, um, but you know, I think maybe. Alan Ackborn didn't invent it, you know, that kind of thing. Exactly, yeah, yeah, <laughs> no, no, no. It's just, it's just basically just some structural beats. Structural beats, ever, Yeah, it. structural beats. If you've ever gone spelunking, which is caving, which is you go down into the, have you ever gone caving, anybody? You know, nobody's gone caving. Well, you should try it maybe when this is over. Um, I've gone caving before and they give you this yellow rope, you know, and you crawl down into the earth crawling along with a light on your head. You know, it's really weird. It's really weird. And what makes it a lot less weird is that you've got this yellow rope in your hand. Mm -hmm. You're like, okay, I'm going down into the deep shit. But I know kind of, I'm connected to something, you know, even Ariadne or what's his name? The guy who went in the maze, I forget his name. You know him, you know the Minotaur? You know, oh, yeah. before, and then Ariadne was outside. She had the ball of yarn. She had a ball of yarn. She had a yarn, a yarn to give to him, a story to give to him, to help him find his way out. It's like Hansel and Gretel's breadcrumbs. Exactly. It's like Hansel and Gretel's breadcrumbs. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I always remind people, people go, oh, I don't have enough 
you know, time or money or ideas or whatever they say, you know. And I remind them of Hansel and Gretel. Even with breadcrumbs, they found their way home. That's good to know. We don't need everything to be perfect, you know, to figure out our things that we need to figure out. And if there's Ben Brantley, like with a wolf's costume, you just say, pay no mind. No, pet him. He's so cute. Oh, he just needs to be pet. He, well, I mean, doesn't everybody? Normally, yeah. not right now. Well, everyone needs it now. Well, well, well every, exactly. Everyone needs it. Just, yeah. just, just pet him, you know, or throw him some meat or something. I don't know. But, you know, but, or, or don't worry about him. He's just doing his thing. He's just being himself. Right. You know? Okay. Thank you. Good questions, Michael. Thank you. Thanks, Susan Laurie. Thanks, Michael. Um, all right. Next, we've got Ray. You My with God. us? I tried for like three weeks to ask a question and now two days in a row. It's oh like, my goodness gracious. Incredible. Hi. Hi um, Ray. I don't even really know how to ask this. Um, and I know the world is on fire right now and that really throws a wrench into people trying to pursue theater. But I'm, whether or not there's a graduation, I'm graduating next month and oh. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, really, right? Yeah, we're gonna do a dance for you. Uh, 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 I guess I'm just Crazy. wondering. Like, I'm. I will do whatever job exists in the next couple months, and I don't know what that will be. But in terms of like in your dream world of jobs that accommodate also pursuing theater, I and like fields that will also fuel your pursuit of theater, and ideally don't kill your soul do you have advice about dream jobs or about jobs that i've worked <laughs> that, that I um jobs I mean, that like accommodate i don't know like right, their hours right. and your theater yeah and i mean it, it, de it depends when you're making theater i mean i had a lot of temp word processing jobs mm. i love temp word processing jobs because and i'm maybe the bankers are listening but they can listen because they got that billion trillion gazillion dollar fees off the bailout so they ought to be given back right now, sorry. So I worked in banks where, you know, for bankers where you, ha where you could actually like do some of the work you had to do typing, you know, or for a law office. And then when they were looking, you could do your own shit. All right. That was, I did that for a long time. Um, also the copier machine often had a ream of paper that was just sitting there looking lonely and maybe wanted to be brought home boy, I needed that paper or, you know, some pens, you know, that said whatever Citibank or what, you know what I mean? Oh, well, who cares? I need a pen because I didn't have a lot of money, you know? So sure. I also worked very hard for these people and did a really good job, but there was a, you know, there was sort of, I allowed them to share with me their office supplies. And allowed for them yeah. to share. Allowed for them to kind share. Of you. Yeah. And also, I mean, and also things like, I mean, you got to be a little, it's a little bit of a renegade. You know, you got to, you know, it's, you, it, it was like that. It was kind of guerrilla warfare, sort of. You got to do your thing. Also, the thing is that the job would end at five, or, you know, it was nine to five, which for me, I would go to rehearsals in the evening. Perfect. Perfect. And I made enough money to pay my rent. So my parents didn't have to do that, which I think is very important. I did not live on my parents' pocket when I moved to New York. That's my own personal, you know, but so, it, you know, those office jobs are kind of great. Um, you know, I know much is said of like waitressing jobs and barista jobs, but those jobs don't allow you to sit and think mm. too tough, you know? Yeah. So you would um, say day jobs more than night uh, jobs for, are well, but best. so that's that's for that was that was that's my you know, I I did a lot of day jobs, yeah, yeah. I think night jobs sometimes it's a lot of a scene. You kind of get you know if you're like a bartender, it kind of is a lot. You know, you kind of get wrapped up in a scene. You want to get wrapped up in the scene in your head. You want to keep that real estate clear for your work. You know, what did Flaubert say? Be, be, you know, bourgeois or be boring in your life so that you can be violent and original in your work. 
Yeah, faux bear. So, you know, we want to be, we want to keep it simple. We don't want to say, yeah, I have a really cool, you know, job, you know, but that pays the rent. No, you got to have a boring ass job. And then I go home and I write. Thank you so much. Thank That's you. really welcome. concrete. And if anybody wants to quote me on stealing uh, or pilfering uh, office supplies, I'll say I was being sarcastic, mm. like our president. You got an alibi. <laughs> That's right, yo. I. <laughs> Thanks, Ray. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right. Next, we got Carol, and we've got about seven minutes left. Go for it, Carol. Hi. Can you see me? Uh, yes, we hi. can. Good, yay. Uh, I, I just wanted to say this has been so helpful. You know, it doesn't matter what stage you're at in writing. There's always something to learn. And um, and and just I've been doing these uh, conversations with my characters, who I thought I knew well, but apparently I didn't, because I'm finding out a lot about them. Uh, and I've been doing that uh, just because with, with your support and encouragement in this, in this uh, program, um, doing that for my writing time, with, rather than working on it or struggling with what I need to think about. And I'm just talking to my characters and listening to, and um, in amazement sometimes with what they're telling me and asking them why. I think you suggested it at, at, when I asked the first question a few time, uh, times ago. But it's, I just wanted to say that's really helpful and it seems to be um, a surprise and, and very interesting to do. So thank you. I'm so glad. You're and always I, great, Carol. Oh, I miss you all. I know, I know. We miss seeing you every day, every week in the lobby of yeah, the public theater. It's wonderful and I kiss all stay well. Yeah. In this crazy time that we'll is your, is your great grandchild born yet? No, um, she's still still on the way. It's and okay. it's twi and it's twins. It's oh. going to. Be, we just found out it's identical boy twins, but we have to wait till August. This well, August September. But it's well, very exciting, and I heard their heartbeats. <laughs> that's fantastic! Yay for you! Yay for and me, I, Carol! And I love seeing Durham fly by the other day. Yeah. That's so funny. Yeah. <laughs> so you. love to love to all of you. Yeah, you guys. <laughs> And happy writing. <laughs> yes, really, right? Yeah. yeah. Thank that, you. That's something we can do for ourselves. Totally. Thank you, Carol. So nice to see you. So nice to see you too. Um, all right, Darren. Hi. Let's do it. Hi. How's it going? Um, so I'm currently still in school and this whole thing is like really crazy uh, yeah. with everything that's going on at the times. Um, I uh, currently, my issue is that I write a lot of poems, um, short stories and screenplays and plays, and I'm currently in school as a theater performance major. Um, my thing is I always had, found it easy to like finish a poem, like beginning, middle, end, and like I really, I'm good with um, finding the end to poems. But when it comes to like writing plays and screenplays, I have like plenty of ideas, but I often have the problem of finding like the key points, like the climax, like I think of like a crazy scene I can think of. Mm -hmm. like the pivotal moment of the story mm -hmm. or like the really uh, dramatic end or even just how it begins too but when I I can write all those pieces out but my struggle is trying to bridge those together mm -hmm. yeah but but like I'm not sure if like if I could use what I've done in poetry to help like with that or not mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah I think I think you can that's a great question um you can use what you've done in poetry to help with that but you can also use um, if you want to build a bridge, study bridges, right? Right. So you want to build a play, you want to write a play, study plays, and you're already in school studying these things. Um, how much uh, reading of dramatic works do you do? I'm currently in uh, multiple classes that we read several plays a week. So great, great. There you go. So it, do you take notes as to their structure? Uh, yes. Uh, li like light notes, but I can. Uh, just improve on that more. But you, you see what I mean? So you're studying the beginning. So you f pick a, a play that you're reading. I don't know what, Hamlet. And you go, wow, that's a beginning. And you think of <laughs> King Lear. Wow, that's a beginning. And then you think of the Scottish play. Wow, look at that beginning. You're looking at beginnings. And then you look at this classic play and you think, wow, what's the climax, if you will? What's a, a high point? You know, what is, also, what do the characters want? You right. know, in, in plays and dramatic writing, it's more 
you know, action based. What do the characters want? What are they trying to do? Um, okay. And pick when you read those plays in class, take them apart as if you're trying to, you know, you're taking a car apart because you want to learn how to put it back together. Or exactly. you're, you know what I mean? You're really taking it apart and analyzing the pieces of it, right? Yep. And then you, you sort of soak that up, soak that in and sort of, okay, in this place. So you get really analytical about it, which won't ruin your, your creative edge at all. It's just going to bone up that, it's going to firm up that muscle, okay. right? Okay, that architecture muscle. You're trying to learn architecture. So you, you can also, if you want to take, you want to read a play, you can watch a movie you know classic right. i love doing that are, great and when you watch <laughs> watch it with a notebook okay this is what happened in the first minute this is what happened at minute 10 this is what happened at minute 30 you know look at that because you're building a bridge so you want to see what the um the pylons are the tent poles if you will if you're building like raising a tent you know mm -hmm. this is and this happened and then this happened over here and then this happened here and so you want to really study that architecture Right. Uh, and just like one small follow-up question, like once I do like complete something, how would I go about with like pitching it to like a production house or like, um, because I, I do have a goal of like, like running my own like pr film production company. But uh -huh. um, yeah, but I, I do know I have to start like with uh, collaborating and, and starting with other production houses. Yeah, it's a great goal though, man. It's a great goal to start your own film production company. I would ask because we're on the ground level that you'd be kind and generous to everyone you meet. Right. Um, that is a, that is a thing that is sorely lacking in, in the business. That is true. Um, I've been in this business for a while and I'm appalled and dismayed about just the, just the, the, the way that people treat each other in this business. Um, mm -hmm. So I would ask that you have, you know, you have a, a kindness uh, in your, in as part of your, one of your platforms or your company. But um, I, would, I would say, you know, you've got your, again, you're in school for it. I would think that your professors would have great ideas. You know, okay. those are, go to people you know and ask them specific, and they would be very specific to you and your play and, and help you make those moves. Okay, thank you so much. I appreciate that. You're welcome so much. It's six o'clock magically. I know, it's crazy. It goes by so fast. It, it's, it's six o'clock. So um, it's six o'clock, it's Friday. And Audrey is going to give us an update about what is going to be happening in the next couple of weeks. Take it away, Audrey. All right. So in the next couple of weeks, we're going to take a brief hiatus um, from watching work every day. Um, but we will be back on Monday, May 11th, which is uh, which makes for a two week hiatus for those of you doing math at home. Um, but you'll be able to do <laughs> you'll be able to sign up uh, for those sessions uh, uh, on our on our website. They should be up pretty soon. Hey, great. Thanks, Audrey. And in the meantime, uh, keep your work going. You know, there's no reason why you can't just keep your work going. If you want to, you know, just write every day at any time of the day, get your work going. And then when we meet back up on the 11th of May, we'll have lots of cool stories to tell each other. Okay. So thank you so much. Thanks, see everybody. See you okay. Weeks. okay. Bye. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.